Hi, I'm Shan Siever, and we are today looking at the law of large numbers versus the law of averages. Come join my class with me today. Here's some vocabulary that you need to know for this lesson. You may want to pause the video here and read through this. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do these three problems. Take a minute to read through it, and at the end of the lesson, I will put the answers up so that you can check your work. So, this is one of the important laws right here, the law of large numbers. During World War II, John Carrick, of South African, a South African mathematician, was captured by the German army, army, army in Denmark and interned at camp. To pass the time, he did experiments on chance processes. And one such experiment, and this is spelled wrong, eminent, experiment, he tossed a coin 10,000 times and observed 5,067 heads. So, yeah. Okay, in his experiment, what is the expected number of heads? Yes, because that's 0. 0.5 times 10,000, right? So 5,000. Find the difference between the observed and expected number of heads. Yep, 67, because it's 5067 minus 5,000 equals 67. Okay? What was the relative frequency of the heads? Okay, so this is, this is uh, not the expected amount, but the actual amount. So you're going to have the actual amount over the total tosses. Okay? And that equals 0. 0.5067. So it says, what is the difference between relative frequency and the probability of heads? You're just going to take 0. 0.5067 minus 0. 0.5, and the actual difference between those is very small, right? 67 seems like a lot, but in the big scheme of things, it really isn't. All right, turn the page. Did we get any harder than that? Hmm? Did you just get harder than that, or is that kind of Well, no, this is not a tough one. Notice that the differences seem like a lot. However, the relative frequency differed from the probability is only 0 .0067, and the relative frequency gets closer and closer to 0.5 as the number of trials increase. This is important. So the relative frequency gets closer to the expected probability the more trials you have. Everybody got that? And that's the law of large numbers. Okay? The more times you repeat an experiment, the relative frequency will approach the actual probability. Law of averages. Now this is different. When a batter comes up late in the game without a hit, a baseball sportscaster said, says he is due for a hit. A gambler who's had a run of bad luck will say my luck is due to change. Both of these statements are based on principle often referred to as the law of averages. But the law of averages is not valid. Okay? You have the same probability on the next turn as you had on the last turn. Okay? The gambler who has, run a, has had a run of bad luck may be correct that his luck has been bad but he is no more likely to have a run of good luck now than when he began. The baseball player who has not gotten a hit is no more likely to get a hit now than before his slump. Okay, so be sure you understand that. The probability isn't changing because he's had so many in a row. It's still the same probability, okay? In the first problem, there is a dice that is rolled 7,500 times. And it says, what is the expected number of times that a 5 or a 2 will appear face up if the, dare, the die is fair? Well, the probability that you roll a 5 on a 6-sided die is 1 out of 6. Also, the probability of rolling a 2 is also 1 out of 6. 
So if I were to add these two numbers together, I'm going to end up with two out of six chances of either those numbers rolling face up. So if I roll the die 7,500 times, if I take that number and multiply it by the probability, I'm going to end up with a number of 2,500. On number two, the experiment is done by rolling a six-sided die 9,000 times. Well, if it's been rolled 9,000 times, the expected value of each side would be 1 out of 6 times 9,000. Each side should have had it rolled around 1,500 times. If you look at our numbers here, you know, it's generally close to that. This one's a little bit large, but look at this one. Oh, this one's a little bit on the high side too. But this one right here is really, really low. So this tells me that this was not a fair sided die. On number three, the experiment is done by rolling a six sided die 9,000 times. Well, this is plenty of times to figure out if, uh, the experiment has fair die, but here it says, can you decide whether the dice is fair if you roll the two fours in only the first 24 rolls? Well, 24 rolls is not nearly enough to have the law of large numbers. We need many more than that. So really, for us to really determine if it's fair or not, we really need to carry the experiment through.